minds of Americans to bear. All right, everybody. I'm excited to be on the phone. Platinum Senior Vice Congress, President Mr. Thomas Turner, Felder. Man, I tell you what. It and we're live, like we're NBA, live, NBA we're NBA live NBA on NBA Facebook. Sorry, we couldn't get started exactly at 12 kind of today. Fashion. You're special. We had some technical You're issues, uh, as sometimes comes up from time to time. And some of us are preparing to go to St. Louis, so we got a lot of sort of challenges. Ray Hendrickson is on now. Mariko just finished. And when he's done, I'll talk to you. So what I'll do is I'll put a picture of Ray Hendrickson on the line. And when he's done, I'll talk to you. But today's Magnificent Monday. Never take today for granted. Tomorrow's not promised. So I'll turn up, I'll turn up Ray Hendrickson so you guys can listen to him. And when he's done, I'll get started. All right? And I'll let you look at a picture. That's Ray Hendrickson. So the culture is different. And you've got to understand that there's a system at your job. And that system is designed to breed or engender an atmosphere or environment. The environment engenders or breeds an attitude of the people there in that environment. And then the attitude in that environment engenders the culture of the environment. So in corporate America, we all know it's a culture of inadequacy, it's a culture of insufficiency, it's a culture of can I make it through can I get to the position I want to get to? Can I fight my way up the corporate pyramid when I make a single solitary job? Look, in my business, my senior partners, all of which earn millions of dollars, say, Ray, look, there's plenty of room up here. Come on up. The water's fine. It's crowded at the bottom. So we're inverted pyramid in our business. It's an inverted pyramid where there's plenty of room at the top, but all the money exists up there. In corporate America, it's a traditional pyramid where all the money is at the top and everybody's at the bottom, but there's no room at the top. At the top of a pyramid, there's one single solitary capstone. That capstone is your CEO or president. And sometimes he's got the purpose to be CEO and president, which means he or she gets two salaries while we're struggling to make ends meet from day to day. In our business, the only way my senior partners make another million is if they help people like you and I make millions first. I like that because it's based on a divine principle. The divine principle says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you want to know why my senior partners make millions? Because they spent a great deal of their time helping other people make millions. And I think that's fair. Why shouldn't you make more money than me if you've helped me make the kind of money I want to make. I think that's right. It's called the law of reciprocity. What goes around comes around. What goes up must come down. Now, I was having a conversation with somebody in the not-too-distant past, and uh, we were talking about, you know, vision and the future and the world. And you know what people will often say after they've beaten, been beaten into submission, when they've been beaten to a pulp, when they can't even look and see beyond the nose on their faces, they'll say stuff like, let's be practical. Let's be reasonable. And sometimes those people in your circumstance or sphere of influence in your network are people who are so close to you, they share the same bloodline. And under the auspices of protection, they think they're doing you a favor when they say, well, maybe you shouldn't dream so big. Let's just be practical. Let's, be, let's just be reasonable. So let's talk about that just for a second. Just for a second, let's talk about being practical. Let me ask you all a question. Is this practical? You work for me for 40 years of your life, 40 hours a week. You have to ask permission to go to the bathroom, ask permission to go to your child's plays, ask permission to go to your child's soccer games, ask permission for everything, ask permission to go to lunch, ask permission to go to the doctor, ask permission to go on vacation even though you've earned the day, ask permission to get a raise, and I'll say no because that's not in my corporate plan, and I'll pay you just enough that you can barely scrape by, and at the end of the 40 years, I'll give you 40% of that. Is that practical? Is that reasonable? I'm not altogether sure that's even fair, much less practical or reasonable. You want to be practical? Pay me what I'm worth. How about that? You want to be reasonable? Pay me what I need to get my children the finest education and money can buy.
seems as though there's some. Done that, there you go. They turn around and book a flight to the Caribbean. What about this? Let's just be practical. Maybe there was a guy or a girl who said, "I'm going to create a device that allows people to communicate because communication is so important, and we want to know what's going on with the people on the other side of the world. We're going to." created an invention, a device that will allow us to use waves, airwaves, manipulate the airwaves so that we can communicate with no cords, so that we don't have to run wires across mountain ranges. And I can imagine somebody saying, you know what, that sounds like a great idea, sounds like a fairy tale. why don't we just be reasonable, let's just be practical, but then they pick up a cell phone to call their children, tell them they'd be home late for dinner. What if there was somebody that said, look, we got these skyscrapers now, and it's just entirely too much to go from the lobby to the 10th, 15th, 20th floor because by the time you get up there, it'll be time to come back now. Who has time to climb 20 stories? Why don't I create an invention that'll get you up there in a fraction of a, t a fraction of the time and you still have plenty of time to get your job done? And somebody will say, let's just be reasonable, but then they push lobby on the elevator. Let's just be reasonable. What if I can create a device that would get you from New York City to the suburbs instead of taking three days in a horse and buggy, it'll take 20 minutes on I-95. Let's just be reasonable. But we pay the tolls. How about this? Have you ever thought of the invention of a toilet, something that we use every day but take for granted? Can you imagine somebody suggesting, look, I'm going to create a device that allows you to go to the bathroom in the house so that you don't have to trace across two feet of snow in the middle of the night when you got to go potty. And I can imagine a friend, family member, business associate, a colleague saying, nah, let's just be reasonable, but then they wipe themselves and flush the toilet. There's so many inventions that we have and we take advantage of every day. When they were first invented, they were called luxury items. But nowadays, they're so ingrained into our routine, you couldn't live without a radio. Let's just be reasonable. You couldn't live without a TV. Let's just be reasonable. You certainly couldn't live without a cell phone or an automobile or a toilet or a microwave or refrigerator. Let's just be reasonable. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's visit the pyramids of Egypt. Did you know it has been proven that the pyramids, the great pyramids, is not a tomb? Who's been teaching you that those pyramids are tombs? They're not tombs. They're instruments. And so these pyramids were built to such tight tolerances that you couldn't slip a razor blade between the blocks. That was over 2,000 years ago. Some people estimated that five or 6,000 years ago. And I can imagine one of the pharaohs going, you know, I want to build an instrument for induction to generate electricity because there are underwater aquifers that create electricity through the ground, and I need something to harness that electricity so that we can have light at night. And I can imagine his wife or his son or his advisor saying, let's just be reasonable. If it wasn't for people who decided not to be practical, there would be no jobs. Think about what it takes to create a job. You need someone to come up with an idea and then have the courage of their conviction enough to implement the idea. And as that idea grows, because they need more help, they hire you and me. So if anybody decided to be reasonable, then none of us would even have jobs. No, I refuse to be reasonable because reasonability or being practical is the prelude to complacency. And complacency is the enemy of success. And success is what you were born, born to be. When heaven decided to make, make you, he broke the mold. And there was a certain series of gifts, abilities, talents, intuitions, whatever it is you want to call it, that were programmed into your DNA specifically. I don't care how many people you encounter across this great globe, you'll never find another you. Why is that? Because you were designed specially to be unique. And so whatever gifts, talents, abilities, intuitions, whatever have you call it, that you have, they were all designed beyond reason. And so for someone to suggest to me in no uncertain terms that I ought to be practical, that's almost a slap in the face to the divine design. Think about this. Do you think this is reasonable? You scrape your knuckle, it starts to bleed, and it heals without your help.
That's not reasonable. Did you realize that your brain is programmed to allow your heart to beat a certain amount of times and it varies between how tall you are or short you are, how dark you are, how light you are, the atmosphere that you live in? Your head regulates that. That's not reasonable. Your nails and hair grow without you worrying about the proper nutrition. That's not reasonable. Your body regenerates itself when you sleep. That's not reasonable. So now we don't live in the realm of practicality because we are walking miracles. For somebody to tell you not to act in your divine design is simply stating in no uncertain terms that you shouldn't live up to your greatest potential. I know it's Magnificent Monday, but it feels like Freedom Friday to me. And so the people in my family, even though I've had pretty significant success, has the nerve to me still to this day to say, huh, why don't you just be reasonable? No, I refuse to be reasonable. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith, and here's how I know if heaven don't want me to have it, he's going to kill me first. That's what I know. The no is eternal. But until that happens, it just means wait. And I'm going to keep fighting. And that's all divine in principle. You fight and fight and fight until you get a yes or a no. That's it. Yes means you get to live your greatest dream. Yes means you get to live up to your fullest potential. Yes means you get to step beyond practicality and teach your children that they too ought to dream. And if you get to the finish line, then you give them permission for them to chase their dreams down. I'm not going to be the kind of parent to tell my children, be practical. If they want to be astronauts, let them be astronauts. If they want to dive to the bottom of the Laurentian abyss, let them do it. Because they were fearfully and wonderfully made. They were made to be walking, talking, breathing, blinking, smiling, laughing, crying, miracles. And so were you. And don't you ever, never, not never sell yourself short. If there's something you want to do, by heaven's permission, who wakes you up every day, he's telling you, go do it. Because in doing it, ladies and gentlemen, it brings him glory and it brightens and satisfies your life and becomes an example to everyone around you. There's some things floating around in your head that you have been afraid to tell people. You got some ideas about some invention that you've been dying to bring to fruition. You got some great ideas on how to refine this process or that process or to make a new thing or to make an old thing new. We just haven't had the right surroundings to share that information with to bring it to pass. All I'm suggesting is you will attract the kind of energy that you focus on. If you want to know why some women have difficulty getting out of abusive relationships, they go from one abusive relationship to the next and the next to the next. It's because it's the energy that they're focusing on. The universe works like this. You will attract who you are. Now, I know if you got one magnet that's negative and one magnet that's positive, then they attract and opposites attract. Well, that's only magnet. In real life, like attracts like. That's why prostitutes hang out with prostitutes. And winos hang out with winos. And drug dealers hang out with drug dealers. And hardworking broke people like me hang out with hardworking broke people. And rich people hang out with rich people. Like attracts like. I wanted something different. And so when this opportunity came my way on September 23rd, 2013, I was sick and tired of being hardworking and broke. I've been hardworking and broke my whole life. My mama was hardworking and broke. Her mama was hardworking and broke. My aunts, my uncles, hardworking and broke. My cousins with PhDs, hardworking and broke. Grandma and them, big mama, hardworking and broke. I wanted to break the chain. And if the phone is ringing and you're the only one that hears it, maybe the call for you. I don't expect my family to accept the, my, my rationale behind being impractical. That's their, that's their problem. And when they stand before heaven, they got to give an account for the deeds done in their body. They're going to have to answer. They gonna have to, I'm just saying, they're going to have to answer. I'm going to live this life to the fullest. And I'm going to chase my dreams down because this life is the only one you've got. I'm not going to be on my deathbed with a lifetime's worth of regret saying I would have, should have, could have. 
I'm going to leave it all out on the stage, and if I don't get to the finish line, I'm going to die on the runway. You better believe the person that eulogizes me ain't going to have nothing but good things to say about me because of what I live. It's going to be too much proof. And so when this opportunity came my way, I said, hey, is this it? Is this the answer I've been looking for? I've been looking for some financial relief. I've been looking for a way to get out from under. I've been looking for a way to get out of credit card debt. I've been looking for a way to pay off the house too soon. I've been looking for a way to bring mama home from work. I've been looking for a way to pay for my children's schooling. I've been looking for a way to finance a new car, go on vacation. I've been looking for a way to get some new shoes. I've been looking for a way to get braces for my kids' teeth. I've been looking for a way to pay into my retirement. I've been looking here, looking there. I've been looking everywhere. When this opportunity came my way, because it came my way of a friend of mine, I decided to take a good look. And I'm thankful I did. I'm thankful for that young man explaining this opportunity to me. I'm thankful that he took the time to teach me how it works. I'm thankful that he spent the time, even in my hard head itself, to tell me, look, dude, you don't know everything, so accept the fact that you don't know everything. Sit down, be quiet, and learn. And because of it, Man, yep, like Mr. Turner said, I made over 10 grand my first 30 days. I showed it, and I showed everybody who told me not to be, who told me to be practical, does this look practical to you? Well, you should have saw the look on them people's faces. Wow, you did that in 30 days? Yeah, and if I would have listened to you, I would have been practical and broke just like you. So I'd rather be impractical and rich than practical and broke. Somebody ought to write that down. And so the Five Links business opportunity became a staple in my existence because it gives me a bridge from being impractical and broke, impractical and complacent, impractical and status quo to excellence and riches, excellence and being superlative, excellence and being excellent, excellent in teaching me how to lead, excellent in getting rid of my fears and getting rid of all of the obstacles that's going to keep me from being my greatest potential. The bridge was Five Links. Because the bridge introduced me to a sea of people who understood the basis of how to become the best you. So I'm excited about Five Links, but I'm excited about Five Links because of the people who are in Five Links. Five Links is just a business opportunity, and yes, it happens to be you know, the most lucrative opportunity we found in the United States. And yes, it's easy to learn and easy to do and easy to teach. And yes, we move essential products and services like cable, internet, home phone, cell phone, gas, electricity, home heating oil. Yes, 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 we don't have to sell it because we deal with name brand companies like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, yes, Nextel, GE Direct TV, this network, Comcast, Xfinity, Cop, Cable, Vision, Opt Online. And yes, I don't have to sell this because you already got it, so all I do is give the savings away. Here's how simple this business is. If I want to get a new customer, I simply ask a simple question because simple is and simple does. I'm going to ask the question. Here's the question. If I could show you a way to save a few thousand dollars a year on the services you use every day, would you want me to tell you? Do you know what over 90% of the people will say? Yes. And all I do at that point is send it to my website. When they get to my website, they pick the service that they want. When they get to my website, they pick the service provider that they want. When they get to my website, they pick the promotional discounted rate that they want. But every time they turn the light on or flush a toilet or cook a meal or wash a dish or open a fridge, watch TV, surf the Internet, make a phone call or send a text, rate gets paid, how do you like that for not being practical? Do you know I get paid like the CEOs of the world? Do you know I get paid like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds? Do you know I get paid like the Astors and the Carnegies and the Rikers? Do you know I get paid like Michael Jackson and Prince? Although they're dead, they're still out earning everybody in your family tree because that's impractical. You got to walk on the wild side. Here's a short side way to failure. Do everything everybody else is doing. I decided to do something different just because I, I wanted something different. And all of my practical friends ain't had nothing I wanted except hard times. And so I love this business. I love the business because it finally gives me permission to be me. You can't be you at work. When you go to work, you got to get in a box. You got to dress a certain kind of way. You got to wear your hair a certain kind of way. And if you don't wear your hair a certain kind of way, if you don't dress a certain kind of way, you get one of those uneasy conversations. Uh, Ray, um, your supervisor wants it to you. You can't talk the way you want to talk. You can't express yourself the way you want to express yourself. You can't be too jovial or too sad or you can't be too anything. What? 
Y'all hear me right now? I'm standing in my living room being all that I can be, and I ain't got to answer to nobody. But let's be practical. Uh-uh. Practical ain't for me. Practical is for the person two steps away from being buried. That's practical. Let's put him or her in a box and put them in the ground. That's practical. I ain't ready for practical. You know what I want to do? I want to be impractical and absolute. I want to be all that I can be. What about you? Now, I know, I know, I know, I know. Under normal circumstances, I would be very stoic in my approach. I'd be very professional, and I would explain the business so that I could dot every I and cross every T. But today is Magnificent Monday. I decided to do this, this something different because even though that might be the practical approach, as you can determine from my scene today, I decided to be impractical. And since I ain't got an answer to none of y'all, I'm all right with it. I'm hoping that I've encouraged someone to just think a little differently. The system that we subscribe to is the system that tells us to be practical. Meanwhile, the guy at the top of your corporate pyramid who plays golf Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, he has a villa in Manila and a summer home in Costa del Sol, and he's telling you to be practical. That dude ain't practical. He's got a corporate jet on standby, and he don't ever have to see you. The only time you may see him is at the Christmas party at the end of the year. You call that practical? Come on, man. I'm ready for some impracticality, huh? And I'm excited. If I were you, with all of the excitement on the phone, with all of the hollering and screaming, I want you to take a moment just to be impractical. What if this business really did work? What if we could create 41 brown millionaires over the last 15 years? What if we were the number one customer acquisition company in the United States? What if we were the number one corporate business entity in Rochester, New York? What if we'd appeared in just about every major business periodical that comes across the newsstand, like the Wall Street Journal, MSNBC News, Your Business at Home magazine four times, Success from Home magazine five times, it's 505,000, nine consecutive times, and the only other company has done that on North American soil is Microsoft. What if? We were governed and sanctioned by the Federal Trade Commission in good standing. What if we had a King Plus credit rating with the Better Business Bureau? Would we still be practical enough for you to take a look at this opportunity? Because if so, I just gave you a significant success formula. Get on board. Take a look at the opportunity. It ain't practical. It's not go to school, get an education, to get a good job, make a lot of money, when you know that on well that everybody you know who tried that isn't living the lifestyle they dreamt about when they were a kid on the school playground. Nope, that's being practical. I ain't going that route. I want to be rich, if y'all don't mind me saying. I'm a little exuberant today. I'm getting ready to go to St. Louis to hang out with a team of brown millionaires. These guys make more money than most of the boardrooms of corporate America, and they come from the same hood that I do. They come from the inner city of the metropolises across the country. I'm going to hang out with them. Please don't judge me by my excitement, but it's never, ever, not never been done before. I got a right to be excited. It is revolutionary in thought. Now, I'm going to be a part of the next wave of millionaires. They got 41 right now. We're going to a south. I got my ticket. I'm on the train. Now, I don't care if you're in the front of the train, in the middle of the train, or the back of the train. Just don't miss the train. Because the train is going to get to a destination. And if you're in the front, the middle, or the back, you will get to the destination. But if you're watching the train pull out of the station because it wasn't practical, what's the chances of you ever getting to the destination? A lot or a little? So, look, if you guys want to take a look at this video, please do so today. Do it today. Do it. Don't let the sun go down. Don't put your head on the pillow before you take a look at this video. You desperately need to see it. And if it makes half as much sense to you as it does for me, then your financial independence is just a few years away. www.5linx as in x-ray, p-a-y-s as in Sally, m as in money, e as in edward.com. Take a look at the video. Get back with the person who introduced you to the video and say, look, I've seen it. I want to save money or I've seen it. I want to make money because we can help you do either or both. And so for those of you who still think I'm being a little extra
Trump. Maybe you think I'm being a little over the top. Maybe you think I'm trying to pull the wool over someone's eye. Well, I got somebody in the bullpen. And this guy decided to be impractical, too. Now, let me tell you how practical he used to be. He used to be a corporate attorney for BET. That means he's got more credentials than most of us on the phone combined. He was responsible for inking the largest deal in the history of TV media that allowed Bob Thompson to become one of the six African-American billionaires on the planet. He had a law practice for 16 years, a title company, not one but two restaurants and 13 properties. Wouldn't you consider that being practical? But well, he gave it all up because he made over 100 grand in our business in less than 90 days. Shot to the top of the compensation plan and in 16 months hit a coveted position that takes the average person five years. Made his first million in less than three years and is the number one money earner in the history of our company at his position and a best-selling author. Is that practical or not? He lives on the edge because until you get to the edge, you have never lived. And that's why I've got a tremendous amount of respect for him. He doesn't live at the mercy of the people around him who say, be practical. He knows 100% of what it takes to succeed in business because he's had enormous success in a very abbreviated amount of time. And he's helped a whole bunch of people, just like you and I, learn how to be impractical, but learn how to live their dreams in the process. And on top of it all, he's having a great deal of fun doing it. We laugh like kids on the playground with ice cream running down our arm. He started out as my business coach and my mentor, but today I'm happy and privileged and blessed to call him my friend. So without any further ado, I want to introduce the summit and present to others the number one money earner in the history of our company at its position, Platinum Senior Vice President, soon to be double platinum, Thomas the Maestro Felder. Maestro, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Awesome. Listen, I'm grateful to be on the call with you, and I'm grateful as well, Ray Hendrickson, to call you my friend. You're a friend like none other. I mean, we run hard together. We make money together. We have ups and downs together. You and Mariko Turner are second to none. If we were in the Army, you guys would be Navy SEALs. Y'all would be commandos. Y'all would be rangers. Y'all would definitely be a step above the rest, and I am so grateful to know men like you have got my back. And now that we are on friendship, I want to talk about our bosses. So many of us think our boss is our friend. We think the boss is our friend because we know where the boss lives. We know the boss's name. We know the name of the boss's wife. We know the name of the boss's children. We know the boss's birthday. We know the boss's car. We know a lot about the boss. And somehow we associate that with friendship. We spend a lot of time with the boss. You would think that you spend time with the people that you love. And if you spend it eight hours a day with your boss, and you spend it two hours a day with your kids, and a half an hour a day with your spouse, it is reasonable to conclude that you love your boss and he's your friend. I think we all know what kind of coffee the boss likes to drink. We know the shoes that he wears, the, the suits that he has, and we brag about his bank account as if it's ours. Or we look at his car and we celebrate his car as if it's ours. I gotta tell you today, your boss is not your friend. Not, no, not even a little bit. Your, your boss does not even consider you in the same way you consider that puppy who seems excited when you come home. Nope. Your boss uses you as a tool. And as long as you're useful, he'll continue to have you around. And the minute you're no longer useful, it's bye-bye, baby. Don't you know if you died on the job, your, your job would change the phone number, change the voicemail to your office before your body got cold? They would change the name on the door before you, your body got cold. They would never skip a beat. They wouldn't have a memorial service for you. No, sir, Bob. They wouldn't sort of have a moment of silence. They wouldn't do that on your job. They wouldn't keep giving your wife or your children the remainder of your check. They wouldn't keep paying it just because you've been there for 25 years laboring every minute of every day. Nope. 
They're not going to have an office holiday. They're not going to name the third floor bathroom after you. Nothing. And I wonder what we're thinking about when we give all of this time, effort, and energy to our jobs and to our bosses. And we, we sort of feel like we live vicariously through him. I hear people tell me all the time, like I said to somebody, I went to Dubai, and their response was, my boss has been there. I told them I went to Cancun. They said, my boss just came back from Cancun. I told them I'm going to Alaska. They said, what part? My boss has been there as if they are living vicariously through their boss. The only problem is that the boss doesn't know it. And the boss has no intention of giving them the lifestyle that they want because the boss can't afford to finance his lifestyle and theirs too. The boss can't afford to send his kid to Harvard and your kid go to Harvard too. Can't do it. Somebody's kids got to go to community college or stay in, stay in uh, or don't go to college at all. The boss can't finance your house and his too. He can't finance two Porsches. Somebody's Porsche has got to give up. And you better believe that the economy gets tight. For those of you who are on the call who think that you come first on your job, if the economy really gets tight, the boss has to make a decision between whether or not he's going to feed his kids or yours. Whose kid do you think the boss would choose? Should we stop for a moment of silence like Jeopardy and go do 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 do? And we don't need to do that. The boss is going to choose his child every day of the week. There's no question about it. So I want you to know that you got to sort of work out a plan. We got to figure out a plan right now, an emergency plan, an evacuation plan. You know, just like when they say if there's a fire, you got to stop, drop, and roll. And you, you, you practice stopping, dropping, and rolling. You practice what you're going to do if there's smoke in the house. You have a plan. And I'm telling you right now, you need a plan. Because there is some serious economic crisis on the horizon. And I don't care who you ultimately vote for. I don't care if it's Bernie or, or Hillary or Donnie or Trumpy. Whoever you pick, there's going to be some problems on the horizon. I was looking at Donald Trump talking about he wanted to get rid of all of the immigrants and somebody responded on the internet that he wouldn't have a wife. They are, they are stirring something up for you. You got to understand that this country was built for people who are property owners. Most of us on this line are not property owners. And if the mortgage company owns more of your house than you do, you're just a glorified tenant. These flags and these stripes and these stars weren't intended for us. They still treat many of us as if we are just chattel. And they sent us to school to get a new set of skills so we can be slaves on a different kind of plantation. Don't you know that school is an institution? Prison is an institution? And what that simply means is they've got to make money. They've got to turn a certain amount of revenue. They've got to put a certain number of students through the system to generate the money for the campus and for the investors and for the professors and for the, the president of the school. They've got to turn those numbers, just like the prison. The prison has got to arrest a certain number of people every year so it can validate its existence to its investors. Your boss hires a certain number of employees so he can substantiate his numbers to his investors. And as the boss's numbers go down, so does your value. Yeah, he's looking at those numbers every year and especially going into the fourth quarter. And he's trying to determine who is he, who is he going to lay off. And, and he looks for the people that give the less value, the least amount of value. They go first. And then sometimes they get rid of the people who have been there the longest. You know, the people who kept getting those, those minor pay raises for 20 years, those people who have worked themselves up to manager and director, they get rid of them next. For some reason or another, the mediocre people have a tendency to stay forever. And the janitor will outlive most managers on a job. The janitor and the, the lady at the front desk will be there for 20 years. And if you realize that you are at a position right now that you can't pay off your bills 
And if you get laid off, you're going to have less money to pay off your bills. And when you get fired, can you easily find another job? The answer is no. Can you create a job? Do you have the skill set to generate your own income? If you don't have the skill set to generate your income, you better start selling all your furniture now. Because I know people that have been looking for jobs for years. My nephew recently graduated with a, with a graduate degree and he was upset, he was crying, because he had been looking for a job for three weeks. He had three interviews and he didn't get a job. I said, oh Lord, this boy is in for a rude awakening. I know people that have been looking for a job for 30 years. I know some of y'all still have never found a job in your field of endeavor. You've never found a job that relates to your degree. You got a degree in accounting and you're working in nursing. You got a degree in physics and chemistry and you're working at the, at the, at the place where they pick up the trash. You got a degree in, in pre-med and you're driving Uber. Your degrees don't sort of line up with what you got going on. And if you get laid off and you don't have a plan on how you're going to put food on your table, you better be creative on what you put on your resume. Because nobody wants to hire you if you've been looking for a job too long. Y'all do know that. You got to be creative. You can't have these long, long gaps in your period of time when it comes for that resume. Some of y'all been looking for a job so long on your resume, you got to put job seeker because you can't remember what you were doing the last time you were working. And you are sort of calling people and asking them to do you a favor, calling people at the church, asking them to pray for you and, and help you get a job and hook you up. And then they have a tendency to turn a deaf ear to this business. This business does a lot of things incredibly well. The first thing this business does is it allows a desperate person. A person has got to turn a lot of money in a short period of time, the ability to do that. This is a, this is a business designed for the desperate individual. When I looked at this business, I was making a decent six-figure income, but truly, let me tell you, unequivocally, without apology, I was desperate. I was paying $46,000 plus per month on properties I didn't even live in. And I just said, how long can you do that? I carried that money for one year. And you may say I'm crazy for carrying it for one year, but I always thought that the mortgage crisis might end tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? It might end tomorrow. Things might get better tomorrow. The Fed might turn it around tomorrow. Alan Greenspan might turn it around tomorrow. Tomorrow never came. I was like Annie singing tomorrow. It never, it never came. And my, my days turned into weeks. My weeks turned into months. My months turned into years. And I had reached a crisis period. And that's what my friend said to me. He said, if I found something we could do together to make some additional money, would you want me to tell you? And the amazing thing is that he told me that just after I had been praying for the last couple of weeks, asking God for a miracle. And I said, what are the chances that this thing that my friend is introducing to me might resolve my situation? And it was, it was an incredible thing because no sooner than I went to the meeting about this business and I saw people with high school diplomas who were making more money than any doctor or lawyer that I knew personally, I said, what would it hurt me to take a look at it? I said, if it doesn't work, I could always go back to what I was doing before. And I stepped out on faith. And I spent just about $249 to get into the business. I bought some products, some tools, some services that I already was paying for anyway. And I, I'll be honest with you, I spent just about $780 when I first came in this business. And I worked this business like, like a horse at the Kentucky Derby. I worked this business a mean four to five hours every single day, six to seven days a week. But what's six hours or five hours compared to working 16 hours and not making half as much money? I called some people who, who I thought would not get into the business, but I said, you know, all they could say to me is no, 
That's the worst thing that they can ever say is no, and I'm right back to where I started. And what do I care if they say no? You think Harriet Tubman got upset when slaves didn't want to leave the plantation, when they were too comfortable with the master? She just went on to the next person who wanted freedom. And it's amazing, she went from being a fugitive to now being on the front of the $20 bill. I think the same thing is going to happen with me and my friends. If I stay consistent long enough, I'll go from being a fugitive to them looking for me, and maybe even I'll end up on the front of the $20 bill. But I want to tell you guys, it's an awesome and incredible opportunity. If you're on the call today for the first time, I want you to take a look at the, the website, www.fivelinkspaysme.com. If somebody in the feed can type that into the feed so those guests who are on the feed with us can see the, um, the address, www.fivelinkspaysme.com, take a look at the video. It is a 20-minute video. It will answer 95% of your questions about what we do, how we do it, and how we get paid. This business is the best thing that has ever happened to me. It has allowed me to retire myself, retire my wife. It has allowed me to sort of drive a, a $300,000 car and have vacations more. I, have more I, get, I get to take vacations from my vacation. So it does, it's done a lot for me. But I think the most important thing that it's done for me is giving me back my time. Time is non-redeemable. When you got time, you can mend relationships. When you got time, you can pay off creditors. When you got time, you could be with God. When you got time, you could lose some weight and go to the gym. When you got time, you don't have to rush through the supermarket. You could get some organic food that's good for you. It gives you time. And let me tell you, time is the only asset that is non-redeemable. You can't get it back. If you're sick and the Lord sees fit to heal you, he can heal you. If you don't lost some money and you in financial straits, God can work that out too. But the only thing that is non-redeemable is time. And you know what? I won't even say God can't redeem the time. Because the Bible says in Joel chapter 2, in Joel, Joel 2, it says that I will restore the years that the locusts have stolen. So even God can restore time. But I'm just saying for most of us, unless he works out a miracle, time is non-redeemable. So take a look at the website. If you're in the business and you need help, you're looking for a mentor, you're looking for a plan, you're looking for some way to sort of help you get from point A to point B, call me or text me. You can text me at 202-409-4456. You can text me or you can email me at run2diamond at gmail.com. Uh, somebody on the feed who knows my number and my email address, just put it in the feed. Um, I'm here to help you if you're in the business. If you're not in the business and nobody's ever talked to you about this business or your uncle quit on you nine years ago and you sort of saying that things haven't changed for you in the last nine years and maybe you want to give it a second shot, contact us. We'll be happy to mentor you. We're happy to mentor anybody in this business. Even if I never meet you, even if you never thank me, I understand that, that there's a star that will be laid up in heaven in my crown if I can sort of extend myself and help people who are desperately in need of my help, right? So we get paid by in heavenly coinage and heavenly currency. With that being said, everybody, uh, I hope to see you guys in St. Louis. We'll be in St. Louis on, on Thursday, on Wednesday. And on Thursday, I'll be doing a presentation from the national stage for over 10,000 people. Hopefully you'll be there. Uh, hopefully you won't meet me there. You'll beat me there. I am grateful for this opportunity. I look forward to seeing all of you guys in person. We still have a few seats left at our Interversity training event on May 22nd. We are having a billion dollar earner come to our event. We're flying him in from Thailand, a 19 hour flight. And unless you have an appointment with another billion dollar earner, come on out with us. It is eight hours of the most awesome training you will ever get in your lifetime. I saw the man train and he made a grown man cry. But beyond that, you have Ray Hendrickson, who is a master trainer extraordinaire. We have some other platinums who are going to be there. We have the number one or the first Latina platinum in the company. Digna De Leon Morris is going to be there. We have a guy who has more commercial energy customers than anybody else in the company. We have a guy who's 60, he was 64 years old 
where he landed one account that pays them over $4,000 every single month and has paid them that $4,000 every month for the last two years. And I think he has several more years to go on one account. $4,000 a month for many of you is going to be better than your retirement. It's going to be better than your 401k. So come and find out what this man did that you could possibly do. And beyond that, I'm going to teach all of you how to make $200,000 a year with a product called TouchSuite. I'll save that for the boot camp. Lastly, I have uh, training materials. As you guys know, we normally charge about $20 a piece for our training materials. But every training material that we sell, with the exception of my book, uh, we're going to sell the book for $10, the audio book. Uh, we're going to sell all the training that I'll be selling personally through the Platinum Helpline will be $5. $5. You can walk out with a CD that normally costs 20 bucks. You can have it for $5. I'm only doing it at the, the Interversity training on Sunday. I'm sorry. I'm only doing it there. I have 50 copies. And if you want a digital copy as well, so let's say you want to watch the training or listen to the training on your cell phone or on your iPad, you'll be able to do that too. All right? And we'll let you do that for $10 additional. You can get the training and you can go ahead and get digital downloads. Okay? So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in St. Louis. When we come out of St. Louis, we are hitting 16 cities in 16 days. If you want to know the cities that we're going to, email me. I'll send you a flyer. I'll post it all over my, my pages. We're coming to a city near you. We're hitting Minnesota. We're hitting Florida. We're hitting Kansas City. We're hitting Chicago. We're hitting uh, Ohio. You name it, we're going to be there. North Carolina, South Carolina. We are going up and down the East Coast. We're going up, down, side to side, <laughs> East, West, North, South. We hope to see all of you in person. Uh, yeah, I see you, Mercedes. We're going to come to uh, California when we're done covering the Midwest and the East Coast and uh, the Southeast. But, it, but with that being said, everybody, I look forward to seeing you in person next week or this week, rather. Time is flying. And uh, definitely make it. It's not too late. We, st we still have people who have rooms that are available. So if you need to share a room or share a ride, we have rooms and we have rides available. And if you get there, we'll find a way to feed you. Is that all right? We got free food at my hotel. So come on by. This is Thomas Felder, Platinum Senior Vice President for the awesome and incredible team TNT. On behalf of myself, Ray Hendrickson, Mariko Turner, and all of the incredible people on this call, I look forward to seeing each of you on the beaches of the world, if not at the beach, at the bank, but more importantly than any beach or any bank, I look forward to seeing you guys at the gates of the kingdom. For what would it profit any one of us to gain the whole world and to lose our own soul? So until I meet you and greet you, walk with the king today and be a blessing, this call, this webinar, or whatever else you are watching me on is officially over. God bless.